Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we are going to be going over all the equipment that I use to make my YouTube videos. Let's do this. This is my studio. What you see here is just the tip of the iceberg, though, as there is a lot of stuff over here that is necessary for me to make these videos. We have computers, lighting, a microphone, audio interface, my camera, my amp, my little drum pedal. There is a lot that goes on here in order for me to make these videos. And today I'm going to be going over all the equipment that I use and how I use it in order to produce these videos the way that I do it. My goal is to outline the basic process and hopefully inspire those of you out there looking to make your own videos and show you that it's not really as hard as it looks. And though I do use a lot of equipment here, there are less expensive alternatives that I'll talk about as well. Now before I talk about what I use to make my videos, I wanted to share a video that actually helped me a lot when I first started. This video is by Think Media, I'll have it linked in the description below. This video is basically called How to Make a YouTube Video by Think Media. They go over all the equipment that you use as well as just the basics of what you're going to need to do and the mindset that you need to be in in order to create these videos. It was very helpful for me watching that video and it helped me with my purchases for my camera, my lighting equipment, and stuff like that. And then with the help of other bass tubers like Patrick Hunter who helped me with my microphone choice, I was able to kind of patch together a studio setup that works for me. So now, let's go over what I use to make my videos. Starting with how you can see me, and that is my camera. I am using the Canon EOS M50. I've had this camera since uh, I started the channel. I purchased it specifically because it was recommended by that video that I talked about and linked in the description below, and it's worked great thus far. However, I'm no camera wizard, and for on-location shooting or places where the lighting is dynamic, I tend to use my cell phone, as my Google Pixel 7 definitely has a really good camera. But for my studio setup, I think this Canon M50 produces some really high quality video. The lens that I'm using is the Canon EFM 22mm f2 STM wide angle lens. I believe that's what it's called. Yes, I got it right. It's a low profile lens that is a wide angle lens and can capture basically this whole area in the way that I like it and also capture all of me. Some other lenses are a bit too zoomed in and then it's just like not all the bass, so I kind of wanted to get as much as possible. I mean, I'm a big dude and basses are big instruments, so I'm glad we're able to, you know, capture this whole area. Next, I want to talk about lighting because I do use a bit of lighting in order to get what we see here right now. I'm utilizing two soft boxes here. I'm going to have these linked in the description below as well from Amazon. Uh, it's about 80 bucks for the pair. They're 65 watt bulbs and they are pretty effective at getting some high quality lighting here in my studio. I also have my basement lights above me, just their regular ceiling lights. <laughs> but those aren't really that bright. And then I have some LED wands in the corner that are lighting the wall behind me. I'm actually going to do a fun experiment. We're going to turn off all the lights and then I'll turn on each set of lights individually. So here we are, we're in the dark and, and you really can't see anything. Uh, that's with all the lights off. Now let's just turn on my basement lights. And here we go. This is how many people would record a video without proper lighting. And they would have their cell phone or whatever and record them playing a song. And that is kind of rough to watch. I mean, I watch a lot of YouTube videos and I would not watch a video lit like this. <laughs> Next, I'm going to turn on the LED wands behind me to light the wall. At least the wall behind me looks better. Now, let's turn on the soft boxes. I'll do them one at a time, starting with the one on my left. Here's just one. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. However, it is still a bit on the dim side. Let's turn on our second soft box. And now, we are fully lit. So lighting is very important when you're making these videos, and it can be the difference between a high quality, very watchable video, and something that people are gonna click away from. And now let's talk about my microphone. 
You all know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. For my microphone, I am using the Audio-Technica AT-875R. It is a shotgun mic and a directional mic, meaning that it's not going to capture any sound in the periphery and mostly going to try and capture everything directly in front of it. Mics are a very important thing. And originally when I started the channel, I was using a lavalier mic and running a cable all the way to the camera. I do not recommend doing this. I recommend just using the camera mic as a reference audio point when you're mixing everything together. That way you can line up all the other audio tracks. However, I recommend capturing your mic audio as well as your bass audio separately through your audio interface. That makes things a lot easier. And with that lavalier mic, I always had some issues with the cable. I ran over it with my chair a few times and was having mic issues. That mic cable was also causing some noise on hollow body basses when it was behind the, behind the body and near the pickup. That's something to consider. I definitely recommend using a directional mic, something that you can keep off camera. One thing that always bugs me, not just in the music space, but in many YouTube videos in general, when you, when you have somebody talking about something and, and they're using a huge microphone and then they're, they're just talking like this and yeah, this is a huge pet peeve of mine. So I highly recommend getting a microphone that can be placed off camera, that can be pointed at you and that can capture the audio decently. You're able to adjust the gain and everything in editing, so that's what I do. I just bring up the levels just a smidge, and honestly, it sounds fine. People aren't really going to be there to listen to your voice. They want to hear the instrument. Speaking of capturing the instrument, how do we do that? Well, we play into our new Ampeg Rumble RB110. We were originally using an Orange Crush 50 BXT and using the line out to go into our Focusrite interface. However, for 2023, I have upgraded both my amp as well as my audio interface. Both upgrades are just modern day affordable options, but I think they do a much better job at capturing the bass tone and the compression in the orange was just really bugging me. So we are now using the Ampeg Rocket RB110, 50 watt, 10 inch combo amp. This is a very simple amp. You have a three band EQ and a volume knob. Our EQs are set to center and our volume is set to 11 o'clock. And then we are running XLR out into our Universal Audio Volt 276. This has replaced our Focusrite 4i4, and I am loving this interface so far. Both my Audio-Technica microphone as well as the Ampeg amp are plugged directly into this via XLR, and this is how I have the level set and everything. I have the vocal compression added to the microphone, and then I have fast compression added to the amp. This compression is a lot lighter and works so much better at keeping the bass tone as is and allowing us to really hear the output differences between basses only coming into effect when something is like way too loud. So yes, I am loving this interface and it's a great interface for recording vocals over a microphone as well as an instrument. And for my little drum machine, I've had this since the start of the channel. This is the Beat Buddy Mini 2. I just use the same beat every time. I'm not crazy about the beat and I may think about changing it in the future for a different Beat Buddy or something like that. But for now, we're just sticking with it. The Beat Buddy Mini 2. As I mentioned before, for a phone, I have a Pixel 7 and that's what I use to shoot my thumbnail photos. So that is a very good camera. I don't use my video camera for the thumbnails. I, I just take it with my phone because it's quick and easy. The phone camera combined with the lighting produces high quality photos that are definitely worthy of a thumbnail. And finally, let's talk about computers, my computer hardware and software. I really enjoy building computers and I have for a long time. And my studio computer is set up with a Ryzen R9 3900X in a B450i ITX motherboard, 32 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz DDR4 at CAS latency 16, a one terabyte and two terabyte uh, SSD, the one terabyte is NVMe, the two terabyte is SATA, and what else do I have? Oh, an EVGA RTX 2060 KO. The 2060 KO actually has a cut down 2080 die as opposed to a regular 2060 die, and that gives it a little bit of an edge in production tasks, which is perfect for my needs. In regards to software, I'm utilizing Reason 11 for my audio recording, recording both my bass track as well as my microphone track. 
For video editing, I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro, and for photo editing, like thumbnails and such, I'm using Adobe Photoshop. Now we are reaching the point where you're probably thinking, hey, that's a lot of money to spend on stuff to make YouTube videos. Yes. <laughs> Overall investment in regards to hardware, like you need a tripod for your camera, you need a stand for your mic, you need tables and guitar stands. I mean, there's a lot that goes into making a production like this, and you are going to spend, you know, a few thousand dollars as a starting cost. And that's if you want to use the same level of equipment that I'm using currently. However, there are a lot of options out there for those who want to do this on a budget. First and foremost, instead of getting a Canon M50 camera with the lens and the tripod and all that, most base videos can be accomplished well with a phone. That's right, a phone. Now, yes, you can go on YouTube and see lots of very poorly recorded phone videos, but that comes down to lighting. The quality of the camera does matter, but lighting is even more important, and most of those are just shot with no additional lighting in somebody's bedroom, and that yields a poor quality video. So instead of investing in the fancy camera up front, I would say utilize your phone if you have a decent enough phone, like a modern iPhone or a modern Android. They usually have pretty good cameras. And instead invest on some uh, high quality lights. The light box kit that I had linked below is about $80 and it comes with the stands, the boxes and the bulbs, everything that you need. In regards to software, there are a lot of free alternatives versus using Adobe Premiere, Adobe Photoshop, and Reason 11. I believe Reaper is a very popular audio and video editing program that is free. And uh, for photo editing, uh, I think there's some free Photoshop alternatives out there somewhere. Or you can use Paint. <laughs> but yes, I would say that if you wanted to just spend money on one thing to improve the quality of your videos, you already have a basic audio interface and uh, you just want to make something, invest in lighting because that will improve the quality of your videos dramatically. You'll still be able to use your cell phone, which is something you already have. I would just invest in some sort of high quality tripod, as a low quality tripod may sway a bit or vibrate with the bass frequencies, so you want something that's going to be sturdy. But there you have it, I've gone over my entire setup, everything that I use to make my videos. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below, I'll be happy to answer them to clarify anything. But this should hopefully line up everything that you'll need to make videos of your own if you're looking to do so. Take baby steps, do your research, and be passionate about bass, because when you're passionate about it, you know, people can tell. I, I love bass. Bass is like, so much fun. So much fun. <laughs> but that will do it for this video. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I will have all the products that I use listed, or alternatives, listed in the description below as well. And that Think Media video that kind of outlines everything that you'll need, and that really helped me. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord channel, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about my setup for 2023. And as always, until we groove again.